Um, I feel very, very happy for the England boys because if they hadn't got there, uh, the next couple of days would have been terrible for them. Uh, they would have been crucified by, by the, the, the British media. And I'm not sure that they are going to go completely free because the second half was awful. The way they played in the second mm -hmm. half, it's not, uh, it's not promising great for, for, uh, for the uh, next couple of games in the tournament. But in the first half, as you said, they created so many chances. Uh, Lingard, on his own, had four chances. He should have, should have scored on all four. Um, Harry Kane, as I said at halftime, yep. is the one guy you need to... You they, they, they need to fall for him. Yep. If the chances falls for him, they did. Um, then he scores. One of the things, though, of course, we've seen in this World Cup are the, the big guns not quite doing it. England did it. They laboured to a 2-1 win, but they've got three points on the board. That cannot be said for Argentina. It can't be said for Brazil. Uh, a lot of other teams. So when you put that into context, it's a good win. It's a very good win because at the end of the day, it's all about getting three points and setting yourself up in the group. So when you win the first group game, you have three points already, yeah. which means when you play the next game, and in this case, England, they play uh, Panama in the next game. They play that in Eastern Novgorod. Um, then, of course, they, they, they can beat Panama. On, on the evidence of how Panama played today, England not they simply have to play. I mean, then they're not, not a great team, absolutely not. But it just sets you up in a different way. Maybe Gareth Southgate can play one or two other players that wasn't working for him today. Uh, but if you if you imagine they haven't won today and and this then become a must-win game against Panama, then maybe he's not brave enough to do these changes. So now he has an opportunity. Well The way they played in the second half, it's not, uh, it's not promising great for, for, uh, for the uh, next couple of games in the tournament. But in the first half, as you said, they created so many chances. Uh, Lingard, on his own, had four chances. He should have, should have scored on all four. Doing it. England did it. They laboured to a 2-1 win, but they've got three points on the board. That cannot be said for Argentina. It can't be said for Brazil. Uh, a lot of other teams. So when you put that into context, it's a good win. It's a very good win because at the end of the day, it's all about um, Harry Kane, as I said at halftime, yep. is the one guy you need to, you they, they, they need to fall for him. Yep. If the chances falls for him, they did. Um, then he scores. One of the things though, of course, we've seen in this World Cup are the, the big guns not quite. Getting three points and setting yourself up in the group. So when you win the first, a group game you have three points already yeah. which means when you play the next game and in this case England they play uh, Panama in the next game they play that in Eastern Novgorod um, then of course they, 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 um, I feel very very happy for the England boys because if they hadn't got there uh, the next couple of days would have been terrible for them uh, they would have been crucified by, by the, the, the British media and I'm not sure that they are going to go completely free because the second half was awful. 